Good morning everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to our weekly update at Rift Amps. Got one of our PR18s that's come in for service and check over. Uh, nothing wrong with it, just a bit of uh, annual TLC and um, he wants me to... Ah, right, yes. So inside it is the brown panel circuit, but obviously this one is in a black panel cabinet. So he's already changed the knobs to brown knobs, which I don't mind the look of, actually. Anyway, uh, so he wants me to convert the circuit to uh, black panel, and he also wants me to check the pot taper on the reverb, sorry. He said the reverb comes on very, very strong and is almost unusable above one and a half, two. So maybe it's got the wrong taper on the pot because it should be usable really for standard use up to about four and then it's all surfy above that. So again, we'll check that. But yeah, this one is um, really quite cool. It's aged well. I'll have to look up the serial number to see how old it is. But it's got you know a little bit of wear and tear on it and scuff, so it has been used. It's loaded with a Celestian greenback, which is not uh, what I originally fit to these things. So um, we'll have to uh, have a listen to that, see how it sounds. But yeah, I uh, can't see anything immediately wrong with it. Just needs a good old clean and a sort out and a hoover out. See lots of junk in the back there it's got the old style it's got the original when i went to my my own foot switches uh which was this style but before we started powder coating them so yeah that's cool it's cool to see right we'll get this thing apart and we'll have a look inside also if you ever want to get on my good side bring me treats so this customer brought me a whole tub of rocky road um, num, 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 num. i'm actually trying to lose weight but that's going to go down an absolute treat. So thank you very much, Robert. I really appreciate that. Well, crack on with your amp. Just finished wiring up the PR35 black panel for Coda Music. So I'm now burning it in on the test bench. Uh, as usual, a 150 millivolt RMS sine wave at 1 kilohertz is what I'm driving the front end of the amplifier with. Uh, tone controls on zero, treble and bass. Obviously, all the effects are off, and we just bring the amplifier up to the point where it starts to square off and just back it down slightly. Okay, so as you can see there, we've got 16.8 volts. Now, 16.8 volts into whoops, into eight ohms. So 16 and a half is 34, 17 is 36. So we're bang on around 35 watts. Lovely. So we'll just leave that burning in now. You see the half power switch here. So we'll just check that. That drops us down to 10.4, call it 10 and a half volts. Puts us at 13.8 watts. So there you go, half power switch. So we'll leave that burning in for a couple of hours, make sure there's no issues. Um, check the bias, really happy with it. It's currently drawing at rated output now, 672 milliamps of uh, current consumption from the wall. At idle, that drops down to roughly half an amp. Bring it back up to rated power. So in fact, if I drive the amplifier to its maximum, you can see its maximum the most it's pulling there, and that's with everything cranked on the amp, is 777 milliamps. So a one amp slow blow fuse is the correct mains fuse for this amplifier. There we go. Looking good. So that can now run for, um, I like to give them at least 24 hours running over the in the course of the week or so, so we'll get it on and off the bench, heat cycle it a few times, make sure you're happy with it. Cabinet is here. Um, I messed up and I ordered the wrong impedance speaker for it, so I've got a new speaker on its way. When that arrives, I can get the whole thing assembled and shipped off to Coda Music. So again, really happy with this one. Look at it, it looks great. Yeah. PR35, black panel, on the bench, running sweet.
Well, I did promise something different for this channel, and here it is. This is the Marshall JCM800 Kerry King Signature Amplifier. As far as I'm aware, and you'll have to forgive me, because one, I'm not really into that style of music, so I'm not, I don't really know the artist, don't really know the spec of the amp, but as far as I'm aware, this is a 100 watt model running KT88. So that should be two of them in there. So it's not a 4EL34 model, it should be KT88. Now, super high gain, of course, as you would expect. It's got some really interesting font and text on this. Can I show you? So they've used this font all the way through. Looks like it's a standard tone, um, tone stack setup. It's got a, a knob here called the Beast, not a knob, a push-push switch. I don't know what that does. Looks like it's got a, a noise gate and it's got a, a knob called Assault. <laughs> I mean, I have no idea. No idea at all. Um, so what's it come in for? Well, my customer has recently purchased this and says it's got a lot of what he thinks is mains hum, which doesn't change if he plugs it into a different outlet. Um, none of the controls or switches affect that hum. So he wants me to investigate that for him. He wants me to give it a once over, service as required, usual bits and pieces and we'll take it from there but i've never seen inside one of these i assume it's standard marshall pcbs inside but let's get the thing open and have a look okay Well, I stand corrected. That is a quad. So I'm just popping the packaging away. A quad of KT 88s. There they are, Marshall branded. So what can we see? Well, first of all, he packed it very well, which is good news. Not always the case, but yeah, he's packed that one really well. Uh, looking over here, uh, got an absolute monster of a transformer there. Let's get the ruler. We'll measure the stack on it. So it's, uh, what's that, 12 centimetres by, by 10 centimetres. Absolute beast. What is that? So that's a roughly four, four inches by four and a half. Huge output transformer, though. It's quite long, but again, quite thin, quite a short stack on it. So inch and a half. Interesting. I wonder if it's... You see, four KT88, sorry, I'm thinking out loud here, uh, would usually be 200 watts. Right, so if this is only a 100 watt amp, yeah, output 100 watts RMS. These are obviously very, uh, even if they're running quite cool or they're simply not stressed at all. Why are they in there? It's probably for the bottom end characteristic, you know, a super tight bottom end, which is why they often work very well in bass guitar amplifiers. Um, and in this, um, I would imagine that they've just taken a standard 4 EL34 amp and just converted it to work with KT88s. There's more heater current that's needed and other bits and pieces, but it's probably... Um, they're probably not pushing these as far as you could, so I bet they last forever. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, no choke that I can see. 
just the power transformer. Again, you always know it's the power transformer because it's usually closest to the uh, input socket, the main socket. And the output transformer usually closest to your speaker sockets. Not always the case, but if you're not sure, that's a good rule of thumb. Okay, um, let's pull the chassis. Right, okay then. What do we see? Just three preamp valves. One's going to be a phase inverter, so that means at most we've got one, two, three, four gain stages. Doesn't seem a lot, does it, for a high gain amp? There must be something else going on in there. I wonder if there's diode clipping or something similar. Let's try and get you a better view. Right. I'm going to need my blocks of wood. Wow, okay. That's surprisingly simple. I was expecting to see multiple layers of PCBs in this thing, but there really isn't. So we'll start up at the uh, mains end. Diagonal transformer. Uh, da, 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 da. 00121, or is it a D5145 model? Anyway, that's that one. Filter cans, more filtering, lots of filtering. Quite, quite a sparse board, to be honest. There's not a lot going on, is there? And the output transformer as well. Front board. You see there's those components hidden, those discrete components there. And our switches on the back. There's not a lot in here, is there? Let's give you a closer look. Now, what are we looking for? Well, it, obviously with our visual inspection, we just look for anything that's out of the ordinary. So anything that doesn't look right, can we see any burnt or fried components? Can we see any solder joints that look immediately faulty? So they could be uh, cold or cracked or anything like that. We just give it a check over, see if we can spot anything obvious. Anything on the front? Not that I can see. So, um, interesting. Let's get you in even close. Let's check these solder pins out, shall we? We'll start with V1. Oh no, these are the output valve, sorry. No real signs of overheating, is there? Two. Maybe a tiny bit of overheating on three. Yeah, here. It's like maybe that's just flux. And on four. Again, quite consistent across the board. And preamp valves. Where are we? Here we are. And the next one. And the next one. And that's it. That's all we've got. Hmm. Okay, so vision inspection passed. I neither see anything obvious or externally or internally on the chassis. So our next step will be to fire it up on the test bench, see if we can find this hum. 
Here's the black Tolexed brown plate circuit PR18 that was in, that came in for black plate conversion circuit only. So that's now all done, all tested and sorted. Uh, I've just finished bench testing it. Just bang on where it needs to be. It sounds great, looks great. Um, the other thing we wanted to do was just tweak the reverb circuit so it's not as intense at the lower end of the dial, which I've now done. Customer can report back to me on that to make sure he's happy. But yeah, all good. Okay, Kerry King on the bench. Uh, I fired it up. I'm driving... No, no I'm running it at 8 ohms, which is what my setup is at the moment. I've got a another microphone on here, so you should be able to hear any noise and hum as well because the one next to my face that I'm wearing doesn't quite pick everything up. Anyway, I've got the uh, the iPad on there. If I go really quiet, you'll be able to see um, how much noise there is. Nothing. Absolutely nothing, right? So there is a, a spike at 100 hertz, but it's at minus 72 dB, which is nothing. You know, I can barely tell that this amplifier is on. So there's definitely not a mains hum. So where does that leave us? Right, well, maybe, maybe we've got a case of misunderstanding. When the customer said, you know, he's got what he thinks is a mains hum, maybe it's not a mains hum, maybe it's a ground hum, maybe it's something else, okay? So what I've got is all the, all the uh, EQ set at noon, and I'm just going to bring up the master. I can hear a little bit of buzzing. And if I bring up the uh, gain control all the way, You can tell, just turn that down a bit, you can tell that is actually quite a noisy amplifier. Okay, so it's not a mains hum, but there's definitely noise going on there. So I'm going to turn those controls up again. I'm just going to tap the valves with my chopstick, see if we, see if it's just a noisy valve. That one's microphonic. That, that one's microphonic. And that one's microphonic. So we've got three very, very noisy preamp valves. So before I can even go further with this, we need to fit some selected low noise, low microphony valves, preamp valves, and then test it again. So what all I've done is I've swapped out V1 with a 7025, which is a very low noise, low microphony valve. And that's made quite a bit of difference compared to what it's for. You can still hear it and it's still there, but we've easily removed half of that noise just by fitting um, a good preamp valve. So we'll do the next two and then we'll see where we are. Okay, so the two, so V2 and V3 valves didn't make a difference to the noise, it stayed the same, so I've put those original ones back in, but we know that V1 did make a huge change. Now, when I mess around with the controls, the treble, middle and bass controls, do affect that noise. So it must be generated upstream of them for them to have an effect on it, right? Basic, simple signal flow uh, diagnostics there. So anyway, what I'm doing while it's, just while it's on the bench, um, I'm just measuring the output. Uh, I've got the 10 times probes on, so uh, that's you've got times that voltage figure there by 10, so 30.4 volts. 31.2, something like that, into 8 ohms. 
31, zoom you in. 31.2 is 120 watts. So about there, somewhere about 110, 120 watts. So nice and healthy, right? It's definitely not um, underperforming as you were. So that's with the, the presence and middle on full, treble and bass on zero, master on full, and just using the preamp control to drive the amplifier. And just at the point of clipping, it's doing 110-ish watts. So, okay, fine. Um, but the noise is definitely in the preamp. Well, at least the noise that I'm experiencing. So anyway, we'll take that out. And... Yeah, the, the tone stack definitely affects it. So we need to keep investigating. A uh, quick update on the Ainsley signature build. The uh, board twisties are now done. I've just got to install my pots, do my bus bar, do my back panel bits and pieces, and then I can uh, start the chassis wiring proper. So uh, good progress on this. This should be done by the end of the week, uh, or at least early next week. And then I can start on the next one. Okay, I just got off the phone with the owner of the Kerry King Signature Marshall. Um, explained what I found, explained what I didn't found, explained what I've done. And um, so it's this is why, um, and this is my fault because I should have done this first, is that um, You've got to clarify exactly what the customer means when they complain of hum, buzz, noise. You know, because one man's hum is another man's buzz, and one man's buzz is another man's vibration or whatever, right? Uh, he said when he plugged it in at home, um, there was a mechanical buzz stroke hum in line with mains hum. So um, it, he said it's it wasn't coming through the speaker as such. It was more something that he could hear, and it sounded like the transformers. Okay, now it does not do that here. Okay, I've tried it in lots of different uh, sockets and things, and I can't get this amplifier to do what he said it was doing at his place. So now he's only just bought this amplifier, so he's only tried it at home. So it could be that he's got an issue at home, but certainly under my testing, I know. I am unable to replicate the issue that he's having. Now, some of you who know Marshalls, the DS, the old DSL and the TSL series did have issues with uh, mains transformers buzzing, where the lamination started to, you know, um, obviously they're potted, but the lamination start to work their way loose and then they vibrate. And the quick fix is just to retighten down the bolt and that, that fixes that but over time you know eventually it gets too bad and you have to replace the unit so um maybe that was happening here i don't know again i've yet to experience it i can't i've tried everything now i've tried everything to get this amplifier to play up in the way that he has since explained to me as what the issue was so um yeah we're gonna have to call this one done sort it out uh, check the bias all those sort of things but you know thankfully you know i did find that v1 was incredibly noisy and putting a low low noise uh low macrophony valve in that place as we saw on the ipad had reduced its noise floor by roughly half so that's a, a really good improvement for a high gain amp like this so we can um i'm now happy to button it back up put it back how it should be and then the customer can have it back. So we'll call this one done unless I discover anything else. Right, so I've got my glasses on so you know it's time for a serious chat. So I always said from the very beginning that I will be open and honest with all of you viewers about how much money this channel makes. Uh, for those that don't know, with YouTube, you don't start making money straight away. In fact, you have to get 4,000 watch hours so the total amount of time that people watch your videos has got to be 4,000 in the last rolling 12 months. 
When you get to 3,000 hours, you can start doing things like channel memberships and super chat and stuff like that, but you don't get a cut of the advertising revenue until you hit 4,000 hours. Now, this channel reached that at the end of January, uh, so from the start of February, I now started to get a cut of that advertising money and started doing memberships and things like that. And I said I would always be open and honest with you guys about how much money the uh, we earn from, or I earn from YouTube, or the business earns from YouTube, you know, how that breaks down, how things are going, and I'd always reinvest that money back into the channel, because this channel is not about me lining my pockets, um, it's about, you know, it's a shop window to show you what I do here at, in the workshop, hopefully it brings in more customers on, on both the, the new builds and repair and servicing side. But YouTube isn't about me, you know, it isn't about me making money primarily on YouTube. Um, and any money that I do earn, I'll reinvest, whether it's in new camera gear or lighting or anything like that, that makes this channel better and more exciting um, for you to watch. And hopefully if there's any costs involved, um, that money should cover that too. So I'm always open and honest. That's the deal. Um, so the new figures are in. Let's show you how we've done. So, uh, February, I've already shown you before, but I'll show you this one again. I'll put it up on the screen here now. Uh, we did 27.3 thousand views, so 27,300 views. Um, a total watch time of 3.7 thousand hours, so 3,700 hours. Amazing. We gained 571 subscribers in February. And the estimated revenue was £72.01. So, what a great opening month, right? Now, I was actually surprised because I didn't think for that amount of views, you could earn that kind of money. And most of you know what I did was when that money came in, I bought myself an overhead camera rig for the bench. And I've started doing some live streams with that. So, um, trying to improve... The production quality of the videos and make things a bit more exciting and show you in more detail what I'm doing. Right, so now we can look at March's figures. Now in March, we did roughly 10,000 less views than we did in February. In fact, it was down to 17,000 views, 39% less than in February, right? Our watch time was down to 2.2 thousand hours, so 2,200, which is 41% less. Our subscribers increased by 152, but again, 74% less in terms of growth than we did in February. But our revenue was £67.98, so only £3 less, which means we've earned more per 1,000 views in March than we did in February. I don't understand it. I don't know how that works. Apparently it's down to how much advertisers are prepared to pay per 1,000 impressions or whatever they call it. I'm still trying to understand the, the whole YouTube thing. But um, it seems that my content was more valuable per 1,000 views in March than it was in February. So... I don't again I don't know what that means I don't know how what to take away from that but it seems the content I was putting out advertisers were prepared to pay more to show their adverts on my videos even though the channel had less views right yes okay and uh so that's where we were in March now April it's only the 11th of April as I'm filming this, Thursday the 11th, right? But I'm going to show you the figures up to date so far for April, okay? So April obviously started with our um, April Fool's video, and then we've had the Tone King video that came out, and a couple of other videos. Right, so far in April, look at these numbers. Nearly 13,000 views, right? Um, 1,700 hours watch time. 
I've gained 140 subscribers. So, but I've already earned nearly 56 pounds, 57 pounds, 56.48 is the number. So, there again, my channel, my takeaway from this is that advertisers are paying even more money per 1,000 views to advertise on this channel. Is that how it works? I don't know. So, um, one thing you have to be aware of is that when it comes to being paid by YouTube, uh, there is a minimum threshold and that you have to earn £60 in the UK uh, before they pay out. If you earn £59, you have to wait until it hits over 60 and they pay you the following month. So it's not even halfway through the month and I'm almost at that threshold, right? So I, I, I don't quite understand it. I've gained 140 subscribers in in 11 days. Amazing. Thank you so much. You know, I'm really appreciate, appreciative of it, right? But I just, I'm still working this out. Is this right? Is this how YouTube really works? Okay, so if I did, you know, all right, so you could probably work it out. Let's go back to March's figures. For March, 17,000 views earned me 68 quid, right? Now, not a large amount of money, but um, I haven't really done anything different. I'm still putting out the same number of videos as I have before. Can you imagine people who are putting out two, three videos a week that earn half a million views per video, right? That's absolutely ridiculous. So um, it's crazy to me. So uh, what do I do? Well, um, the whole point of this, and it's, you know, I'm trying not to ramble on too much, but this, all of that money is being reinvested in, in the channel. I've got a new camera coming because I currently film this on quite an old iPhone. Yes, it's in 4K now, but um, we're upgrading the camera. Um, I've got better lighting coming, more microphones and more sound so we can do better stuff. But I'm still trying to keep it as easy to make and easy to produce as possible so it doesn't take over because this is, this is just a, as I always say, it's a show and tell. The work comes first and I show you what I'm doing. YouTube is never the priority. But yeah, those are the numbers. Thank you so much for watching. You know I really, really appreciate it all. I say this all the time, but I still can't believe that people tune in and watch my videos. So thank you so much. Um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up comments down below um i've started to reply to more videos uh, more comments sorry so if you you know if you have a really genuinely interesting question or comment um higher chance that i'm going to reply to it you know my rules on stupid comments and um if if you want to join this channel please do it's not a lot of money it really helps you get access to the videos early and um i shall catch you all at the next one Thank <laughs> you.